Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days, and I had a discussion recently on Patreon with uh, one of my supporters about resume and how to make it better. One of the things that I've noticed is that they have gaps in the resume when they were not working, or they had unnecessary details like unrelated job experience or unrelated education. Uh, some of the resumes are like three, four, five pages long and include many, many different details, even if it was like a month's experience, maybe something not related to the field. So I just want to tell you this, your resume is a reflection of uh, the skills that are most fitting to the job that you're trying to pursue. So try to limit your resume to only a couple pages was the most relevant experience. And if you had a couple months of gap or you were doing some jobs in between, you don't really need to show that. Uh, you may just include a year for the position. Like I was working this in 2013 or something like that. Don't have half a year gap and then half a year working. Uh, those details are not necessary. You will have a job screen. If you are like me, you work in the United States, they will do your background check, they will run your background check, and you will explain that, okay, there was a gap then. But once they do in the background check, they already uh, are ready to give you the offer, you already passed the interview. So an explanation that I was in between jobs or I was taking a break will be just fine. You don't have to have it on the resume. You don't want five pages resume that the recruiter have to look through and they have to figure out where you were working or not working. Your goal uh, with the resume that is it is presented for the job you're looking for. It has the skills that the job requires in the resume. And it's easy to understand. You have relevant experience. So you can start going through the recruiter. You can start going through the interview process. And the interview is like 90% of success, right? If your resume is lacking a little bit, you might not get to the interview itself. If your resume is tailored and you get to the interview, now you pass the interview. Now you show your skills, your job experience is relevant. Then you're going to get the job. The details uh, that you were half a year doing, um, maybe you had a layoff or you were, uh, were studying or taking a course, that, you know, you can explain that during the hiring process. It doesn't have to clutter your resume. Your resume essentially, it's not your, like, you know, your uh, autobiography on your life. Another thing that I was asked, so... Um, Candidate is seeing a lot of jobs with uh, Java Selenium, for example. They're looking for a job, they have Playwright on the resume, and uh, they don't have uh, Selenium, Java Selenium experience, but they have a lot of jobs available in Java Selenium, and they've been asked about it a lot. Okay, that is fine. If you don't have a job experience, it shouldn't stop you uh, applying to those jobs. So just pick up a course on Udemy, and I'll share the link in uh, the description. Uh, it's... Uh, a teacher that I know really well, I've known him for years, and he had a lot of uh, courses created on Udemy, including uh, Java and Selenium. His name is Dmitry Shishkin. I'll uh, share the link in the description for his Java Selenium course. So what you want to do, just um, if you see there are a lot of jobs in automation for Selenium and you don't have the skill, but maybe you have Cypress or Playwright, go ahead and grab a course on Udemy complete the course, get the certificate, add the certificate of completion of the course into your resume, then also have a project available. So with the course, you'll have a project, you'll have a GitHub uh, account, you'll create your own automation in that GitHub. And then when you're going for the job, just start applying for Selenium jobs once, once you complete it. And then during the interview process, just share with them the project. Tell them, okay, I didn't have a lot of exposure to Selenium on the job per se, but I have a lot of exposure hands-on. I finished the course, and here is the project that I created. And feel free to open up your GitHub account. Feel free to show them what you've created. Feel free to show them how your automation is running uh, on your machine and just share with them. Yeah, so if you're looking for someone who can automate in Selenium, I can do that. I recently completed a course. Here's my certification. Here's my GitHub. Here's the project. I'm running uh, the project right in front of you. You can see the automation is working. And that's going to be much better than having nothing at all in your uh, resume in related to the Java Selenium automation experience. Like if you have Cypress, if you have Playwright, but you feel that there are a lot of jobs in your region that are looking for uh, Selenium automation with Java, go ahead, 
create uh, your own repos repository, create your own project, and feel free uh, feel free to share it during the interview process. I guarantee you that you will impress your interviewers. You will show them that you can actually do things hands on, and you'll get hired. It it will be much better than saying, "Oh no, I don't have." Uh, Java Selenium experience, but I do have Playwright or Cypress, and I can learn really fast as needed, if needed. Uh, if you're going to approach it like that, most likely they're going to go with another candidate that actually has something on the resume. Maybe they had it, maybe they worked on it like five years back, and not recently, but the, it's still on their resume. So adding a fresh course and a certificate and having the project that you can show and share gonna increase your chances of getting hired for that particular tool so and if you already did some automation if you did some automation with playwright if you did some automation with cypress you know uh adding this to your tool belt maybe gonna take you a month maybe maybe two maybe even less if you have time to spare and you can practice daily for several hours maybe it's going to take you a week so you will follow along the course you will create your own project you will add it to your github it will be in your resume it will be in your per portfolio and it will be visible to the recruiters and it will be visible uh, to the hiring people that you're going to be interviewed with okay so again uh, make sure that your resume is up to date uh, make sure that you don't have unnecessary details. You don't clutter it. You have only relevant experience or, you know, experience that are close to the position that you're looking for uh, and the tools. And if you're lacking in a tool that uh, this particular job is re requiring and you see there's a lot of uh, requests for that tool on the market, feel free finish a course, add a certificate, build a project, put it on your resume. That's it. It's that easy. And then when you go for the interview, you can show it to them. You can tell, yes, I've been doing Playwright mostly at work and my previous position, but I also created a project with Selenium Java. Here it is. Let me show you. Let me launch it. You, you will see how your automation logs in, does verification and all that stuff. Okay. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. It's easy. And um, it is better than saying, you know what, I don't have that experience, but I have another experience and I can learn. It is much better to actually show that you've done it. Okay. And just to give you a better visuals on the resume example that I usually share on the Patreon, uh, when talking about people's resume. So this is what I give as a starting point to update your own resume. So I have first name, last name, the contact information here. Then there is the position that you're looking for. Again, the formatting, you adjust yourself, the sizing, the title, all that stuff, but kind of a layout of it. Then there's a summary uh, with a list of the technologies. And then we go to the experience. And then you can see, okay, this is... Uh, the position that you hold and it's starting what date till present there's a technical scope for the skills that we're using what you're actually doing uh, and again it follows the same format so the experience and then within experience we have one position uh, we have another one then we have one more this one actually one company two different titles it was in that company and also there's like no months it's just 2018 2019 technical scope job description uh, same thing here again the, the title that i was holding the company that i worked the years that i worked uh, what i've been doing the technical scope of things that i were doing education uh here the most recent one that i have license and certification was a certification number if you want to look it up and also summary for skills so that would be like your uh starting position on formatting your resume to make sure everything is out there very easy to understand from uh from one section to another where's the summary what kind of description of the summary what kind of job you're looking for how to find you how to contact you uh, then within the experience every job is separated there's a title for each job there's a technical scope for each job plus the tools and skills you were doing or project you're working on in the job uh, there's the year there's a company name uh, then the, after the experience section there's a clear section for education and then there's a clear section for license and certification and also additional skills uh, for better uh, exposure when someone's using tools to search for relevant skills in the resume. So this is two pages long. So within the 14 years, 
all of experience as a QA engineer. This resume is only two pages with the most relevant stuff, the most relevant position, job titles, job descriptions, and skills that are required uh, to find a job, right? So try to stick to that formatting. Try to make sure that your resume is relevant to the job that you're looking for and that it is up to date. Okay, so hopefully this video is helpful. This was Alex USA Days and bye-bye.